Greetings, I'm Pastor G.J. Barnes. Welcome to our Bible study. Today, we're going to talk about how to have courageous conversations. Have there ever been any conversations that you know you needed to have, but you've been putting off and you haven't had it for a lot of reasons? Well, today we're gonna to look at scripture and learn how we can build the skills, pray, and be led by the Holy Spirit to have those courageous conversations that I believe when done right and in God's will will lead to a miracle. Hey, I'm Pastor G.J. Barnes of The Purpose Church. Welcome to our Bible study. Stay locked in, stay tuned. We're going to be talking about something very powerful today, and I'm going to show you in Scripture how to do something that many of us don't like to do, and I declare because maybe we just don't know how, and that is to have a courageous conversation. As you're watching this Bible study, I greet you. I welcome you. Let us know where you're watching us from in the comments. So good to have you with us today. Uh, and make sure you like and share this broadcast. You never know who is going to bless, right? So we stay connected and stay tuned in. We're talking about today, courageous conversations, how to have tough conversations. For those of us who follow and worship with us on Sundays, we are also uh, coming from this theme in our uh, sermonic topics, in our sermons, in the message on Sunday. And so today I want to just unpack that a little bit, dive a little bit deeper so that you are even more equipped. I encourage you, go check out Sunday service, uh, the first Sunday in June of 2024. Um, if you want to see the sermonic presentation of this. But today we're going to dive into the scripture and we are going to uh, really get some clear direction and steps on how to have these tough, but often necessary, courageous conversations that I believe when we do it right in God's will at the right time, in the right way, God will still pull a miracle out of it. All right. Well, we are coming from the book of uh, Nehemiah chapter 2, verses 2 through 5, and uh, I want to just read from the NIV version. This is our scriptural foundation for today. Um, so much happens in the greater uh, text, in the greater chapter of this part of the Bible, but we're going to just take a focus here at a particular area um, to pull out of it these steps, how to have these courageous conversations. Nehemiah chapter two, verses two through five. And just to give you a little bit of background, uh, Nehemiah, who is someone who works really closely with the king, the king um, that is over the land where he is right now, he works closely with the king. And so that's uh, where we pick up right here in verse uh, two. And let's see what happens. So the king asked me, this is Nehemiah talking, why does your face look so sad when you are not ill? This can be nothing but sadness of heart. I was very much afraid, but I said to the king, may the king live forever. Why should my face not look sad when the city where my ancestors are buried lies in ruins and its gates have been destroyed by fire? The king said to me, what is it you want? And then I prayed to the God of heaven, verse five, and I answered the king, if it pleases the king, and if your servant has found favor in his sight, let him send me to the city in Judah where my ancestors are buried so that I can rebuild it. And so this chapter really is the beginning of what is to come, this whole rebuilding of the wall, so much to unpack there. But first, how did all this start it? How did all this get started? How did all this begin, right? Scripture shows us that this began with a courageous conversation. And that's what we're going to unpack here today. Because, you know, having these courageous conversations are very important. What we sometimes do, whether we are in the church or not even in the church, is that we just 
ignore uh, the things that we need to talk about. Or we just sort of hope that, you know, out of sight, out of mind, um, you know, hear no evil, see no evil, and there is no evil, right? But what we're going to understand today is that sometimes, uh, many times as Christians, especially as believers, and especially as we are seeking to be mature believers, We've got to know how to have these tough conversations, difficult conversations, or what I call courageous conversations. There are many times we don't want to have them. There are many times that we would rather just hope it all just gets fixed in the background, right? Sometimes we treat God like that. Sometimes God, uh, we come to Him with prayers. We come to Him with the things on our hearts. And we just really want God to fix it in the background. We don't want to have to deal with it. But a lot of times God's answer to our prayer will be to do something, right? A lot of times God's answer to our prayer is to trust him and act on something. And so I want to encourage you today that, you know, don't just get into the mindset where you believe the only way to get a miracle is if, you know, God do it in the background and that's it. And that if, you know, God didn't do it when I asked in that moment, then the miracle isn't coming. The key is to listen to God, right? The key is to really keep your ears, spiritual and literal ears open so that when God speaks, you can hear. Because sometimes God will push you in a direction for you to do something. It's not to hurt you. It's not to harm you but it's to push you in that direction so that you will get to God's full plan for your life. Well, that's what happens here. Uh, Nehemiah wasn't feeling good, right? And he was really disturbed. He was disgusted all the way to the point where the king saw him. But what happened was in the scripture, he had to do something about it. So today I'm going to give you some steps, how to have these courageous conversations, what to do, pastor, all right? Number one, or step one, is you've got to recognize the need for the conversation. You've got to recognize that, hey, there is a need to have this conversation. There is a need to really talk about something. There is a need uh, to really communicate. Here in the scripture, the king noticed Nehemiah's sadness and questioned him about it. The first level of need came from the king, where the king just didn't ignore Nehemiah's face. He didn't just ignore clearly what was Nehemiah's emotional disturbance. I want to challenge us as Christians and believers and those who are learning to really understand what it means to be a believer, what it means to be a Christian. There are many times when we will see things. God will expose us to things, right? Whether it's literal or whether it's spiritual, whether we see something in the spirit with somebody, whether we see something kind of, you know, supernaturally that even other people don't see. Sometimes we just see something in the natural, see something just physically with our eyes. And what God is encouraging us to do is to not ignore it. The king didn't ignore it, right? He could have just said, you know what, Nehemiah is looking all crazy. He's emotionally um, distraught, clearly. But you know what? I ain't going to say nothing. I'll let him figure it out on his own and and he'll be all right. But that's not what happened, right? The scripture says that the king called him out on it. He talked to him. He did something. We've got to pay attention to the emotional and relational cues that indicate a need for a courageous conversation. Recognizing the signs that something important needs to be addressed is what we have to make sure we do not ignore. There will be signs, there will be cues, there will be things uh, that perhaps other people display to us. If somebody's off and you can see that they're off, if somebody isn't operating in a normal way, if somebody isn't really, you know, themselves, uh, that's a cue, right? That shouldn't be ignored. The reality is, as many of us even, you know, have the saying, How's it going when we greet people? We'll say, how are you, (laughs) right? Many of us say that and we've said it for generations and it's something that, you know, we got used to. But here's the question, right? Do you really mean it? (laughs) Do you really mean that statement of how's it going, question mark, 
do you really mean the, you know, question of how are you, right? Because if you really mean it, then you ought to be equipped and prepared for an honest answer that comes from it. And so when we say, how are you, and we know somebody is off, or we see somebody is showing a cue, is displaying an emotional sign, is not themselves, right? It's time for, you know, you to push a little bit further. Now, yes, I get it. Many of us kind of have a hands-off approach, right? We kind of have a, you know, um, I don't want to get in it type thing. And we're going to talk about, you know, how is it that we sort of balance that, right? Because we know there are some times when, you know, maybe it isn't appropriate for us to get in it. And, and that's why it's important to know sort of even in this step, um, recognizing the need for conversation is to also understand in this, you have to pay attention to the timing. We talked about this on Sunday and I dove a little bit uh, into this and really unpack this uh, idea of timing in the sermon, but that is also connected to this recognizing the need. Because sometimes it could be an appropriate time to dive in it, but you know, there are times when, you know, the moment clearly isn't right and it's not appropriate. And so it's important for us to know not only when I'm recognizing the needs, the cues of this individual, but what is the timing like? Is this the right time to dive into this? Are we in a setting where the person can really talk and talk freely? Are we in a setting where we won't be distracted? Is this the right time because things are going on? That, that's something very important because here's the thing. If, if you want to have a productive, fruitful conversation, you want to make sure that certain distractions and things right, are not there. Now, can I give you a can we go a little bit deeper with this? Can I give you a little bit more about the timing piece? It's important to know the timing, yes. It's important to recognize the timing, yes, and recognize the emotional cues. But here's a major PowerPoint for you to not forget. Don't let timing be an excuse to never have the conversation. <laughs> what do you mean, Pastor? This is what often happens. People will agree with me and say, you're right, Pastor, courageous conversation, look at people's emotional cues, make sure the timing is, is correct. But this is what they'll say. Pastor, I just, there was never the right time. <laughs> the timing was never right. All right. Don't create a metric of timing being right so high that it will never, ever be fulfilled. Right. You know, a courageous conversation can be tough and it can be something difficult, but there are some moments or sort of maybe some things where, you know, it's just never going to be perfect. Is it going to be a situation where everything in your life and in the world aligns and we're sitting in the right moment, you know, et cetera? Maybe not. Don't let that become an excuse that the timing was never right. Because if you're not careful, you can go on and on and on days, months, years, decades, generations, and never have a courageous conversation because we always leaned on the idea that uh, the timing was never right. Yes, there are balance pieces that we ought to know as it relates to timing, but don't let that be an excuse to hold you back. So everything doesn't have to be perfect. But you know that I see these cues, I see the need, I see what's happening here. It's time to have a courageous conversation. All right, step two. After you have recognized the sort of need, right? After you have recognized uh, someone's emotional um, disturbance, someone being anxious, someone acting different. Step two is you got to learn to overcome your fear. Let's be honest, right? Having these courageous conversations many times come, especially with the person who is initiating this conversation, having a lot of fear. And we can have all sorts of fear, right? Fear of um, hurting the other person's feelings. Fear of us not knowing what to say. Fear of going down a road that will unpack even more uh, painful pieces, fear of bringing up the past that may be too heavy for us to really, you know, know. 
Here's another fear. Fear of the daggone truth. <laughs> I don't know about you. I've been in moments uh, in my past where I didn't want to have a conversation. And it wasn't necessarily that I was afraid of talking about it, but I was afraid of what the truth was going to be. Sometimes some of us like to see people in our false reality, you know. It's one of those things where I was uh, communicating with somebody and I was trying to tell them about how somebody, you know, was not displaying love toward them. That they were in a relationship with somebody. They said they loved them, but trying to let them know like, hey, this is not love. But here's the thing. It wasn't that they were afraid to have the conversation about it. They were afraid to discover the truth that I might be right. Afraid to discover that, man, this might not be love. And I, and I don't want to face that. Afraid that, hey, if I just keep it in this state where I just believe everything is all right, even if there are these red flags and toxic things going on, I don't want to really understand the truth because the truth would mean this situation is over. That, that truth would mean this relationship has to be over because I can't really be in something that is a relationship where somebody doesn't love me. Sometimes we're afraid of the truth, right? But here in the text, we have to know that in order to have these courageous conversations, to get to the place of wholeness, of healthiness, is that we got to overcome fear. Nehemiah in this text admitted that he was afraid. The king wasn't afraid, which made sense because it was the king. He was, you know, the one with the authority power. But Nehemiah, you know, worked for the king and he was afraid, afraid of a lot of things, afraid of how the king might see him, afraid of what the king might even say to him, afraid that the king might not like what he's saying and, and respond back to him and say, I don't care about what's going on in your land. Get yourself together. I don't want you acting like this. Afraid of who knows what, afraid of a lot of things. The Bible acknowledges that. The Bible says that, you know what? Nehemiah was very much afraid. But he learned how to recognize that there was a fear that um, was creeping up in him. But he didn't allow that fear to hold him back. He said, I was very much afraid, but I said to the king. Here's what I want you to realize, guys. You can acknowledge that there's perhaps fear and anxiety, especially having some of these courageous conversations. It's natural sometimes to feel apprehensive or to feel a little bit of stress or anxiety about something that is difficult, heavy, painful, hurtful, right? But it's not that you don't have those fears that creep up. That becomes the biggest challenge. It's not having them. It's when you have them and you don't act. In other words, as long as you act, as long as you move forward, as long as you continue on the conversation, those initial fears can be there. Because as you start to act, as you start to communicate, you'll remember what the scripture tells us, that God has not given us a spirit of fear. That there's all sorts of things that seek to come up and cause fear, cause anxiety, cause doubt. But guess what? You don't have to stay there. I want to encourage you today that even when fear comes your way, it doesn't mean you have to continue to engage the fear. Yeah, fear will come knock at your door. Yeah, fear may be there when you open the door. Yeah, fear may be there in your doorway. But that doesn't mean you got to let fear in. <laughs> Yeah, Pastor, I just wish I never felt fear. I wish I never had fear. And that's and that may be the case, because guess what? Even as fear comes knocking at your door and as long as you don't let fear in, fear will stop knocking at your door. Right. Because you'll have a whole new experience. But but even as we're getting to that point, yeah, fear will come and knock at your door. Yeah, fear will come and and and, you know, try to ring your doorbell. Right. Yeah, fear will come all the way up into your doorway right in front of your face. But you know what? I'm not going to let fear take residence in me. Nehemiah acknowledged that he was afraid. He was honest about it. And that's real. These courageous conversations, these tough conversations aren't always easy. And that's okay. 
Be honest about it. But keep moving forward regardless. All right. Here's step number three, guys. Step number three is prepare your heart with prayer. As we have to deal with these courageous conversations, sometimes these tough conversations with loved ones, with coworkers, with supervisors, with insubordinates, with business partners, with friends, in relationships, with spouses, all sorts of things. Prepare your heart with prayer. The scripture says that as Nehemiah was asked by the king, what's going on, right? And Nehemiah acknowledged he was afraid, but he went on anyway. There was a point in scripture where the king said, what is it that you want, right? What is it that you need? And before Nehemiah responded, the Bible says he prayed to God first. Here's the piece that I want you to grab. Seek God's guidance through prayer, especially when you're having these courageous conversations. Ask for wisdom. Ask for clarity. Ask for, you know, the courage to speak in love and in truth. When it comes time to having these conversations, it's always better to start with prayer. It's always better to start with prayer, whether it is you and the person praying, or even if you can't do that, start with prayer by yourself. Before you go in there hard and heavy and hurtful, maybe, and you know, all those sorts of things, you know, and say, let me start with a word of prayer. Let me pray first. God, give me the words to say. God, give me the right mind. Allow the spirit in you, God, to be in me. And God, help me to be in peace. Help me to not be anxious. Give me clarity. Allow me to open my ears so that I may listen, right? Start with prayer. Because what prayer does, it invites God's in. It, it, it invites God, God's mind, his words. It allows the Holy Spirit to be planted in you. And it helps us to not get so focused on the distractions of the world. When we pray, we focus. When we pray, we tune in, right? And so I would encourage you, pray before you move into the courageous conversations, the tough conversations, whether you're the one initiating that conversation, okay? Whether you're the initiator or whether somebody initiated that conversation with you and you're responding to it, make sure you pray. Because when you pray, it will reset the temperature. It'll reset the atmosphere. It'll reset your heart and mind. It will help you to remember to what really matters. It would allow the Holy Spirit to come in be manifested in you, right? It'll allow that flesh to, the Bible says, let the fresh flesh decrease so that the spirit may increase in me, right? It allows that flesh to decrease when you pray, when you reset, right? Because some of us have been, our flesh has been so increasing, 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 increasing. That's why the Bible says pray without ceasing, right? Our flesh has been so much increasing. That's why we've got to pray, reset, Holy Spirit, thou art in me. And so prayer changes things. And Nehemiah was no different. He was with the king. The king asked him. He was honest, right? But he said, you know what? Before we go any further, I'm going to pray. Can I get you to pray when you got these tough conversations? Whether you're going to start them, whether you're going to respond to them. Can I encourage you to do that? Let's move on to step four. Step four is uh, something that was important. I mentioned a part of it. Step four is to be honest and transparent. I love how Nehemiah was, was honest, right? Even when the king asked him initially, you know, what's wrong with you? He could have, you know, played it off like many of us do. Oh, no, I'm fine. I'm, I'm all right, right? And I get it. There are many times that we don't want to be a burden to people or some people we can't really trust with our honesty. And, and not, that doesn't mean don't be honest with them, but we can't trust certain people with the rawness of our emotions. I get it. But there always comes a point where we do have to be honest. And Nehemiah was honest with the king. He didn't brush it off. As the king was honest with him, he was honest with the king. 
You notice that when the initiator was honest, and that will help the person who you're trying to communicate with be honest back. Nehemiah said, you know what, I'm honest, and yes, I am feeling a certain kind of way. <laughs> he was honest about why and honest about what he was dealing with. And he was honest about, you know, what he really needed to do, what he really wanted to do. He was honest about his feelings. He was honest about the situation that was happening in the city of Judah. Here's the thing, guys. Clearly and honestly express your feelings and concerns. Transparency builds trust and lays a foundation for an open, productive communication. Honesty means honesty, but also respect. Be respectful for those who are honest with you. When somebody's honest with you, even if you don't agree, even if you have, you know, negative feelings about their situation, their honesty, still be respectful of their honesty. Still be respectful of the truth, even sometimes when the truth hurts. Nehemiah was expressing that the truth hurt it. The truth of his um, home hurt it. It hurt him so much that he looked different. The truth of things sometimes hurt. But here's the thing, guys. If you want the truth from others, then respect it when it comes. I want to say that again. If you value the truth from other people, then when they give it to you, respect it. That means if somebody's giving you the truth, don't, don't go crazy on them. Don't, don't disrespect them. Don't make it even more ridiculous. Sometimes you may not know, I get it, if it's the truth or not, but always treat it as if it is. Give people the benefit of the doubt unless there's a reason not to and then treat it with respect and honor. And I want to encourage you that if you do, maybe, just maybe, they'll treat you back with respect and honor. He was honest. He was transparent. Sometimes we don't have these tough conversations because we're not truthful. And man, let me take a moment and interrupt just to encourage and inspire you that as you're watching this Bible study, don't forget to sow a seed. So many times, so many people watch, but they don't sow. And so I want to encourage you today, sow a seed today in God's house. You can find giving options on our website, fullpurpose.org, or you can give a seed today at cash app, dollar sign, full purpose. If you're able, match a gift with me of $50. If not, sow whatever God put in your heart. But we're grateful because you're not just a spectator, but a participator in spreading God's kingdom. All right, let's get back to the word. When people are not truthful, it just creates so much distraction, wastes so much time. Let me tell you why. Because if you're honest, you never know how God will be able to bless you. Let's think about it. If Nehemiah never was honest about what was really going on in his life and really what he wanted or needed to do, he would have never got the opportunity to go do it. Because, you know, here's the thing, and I've said this on Sunday, you will miss 100% of the shots you never take. Even if you take some shots, you may miss them, but some you might make. That's a sort of a metaphor for us to realize that, you know what, even in his honesty, maybe something will come out of it. The scripture shows us that something did come out of his honesty and it was a blessing. But if you weren't honest, if he wasn't honest, he would have never, 100%, never got to the blessing. And so today, I pray these points have been productive. I pray these points have really helped you, helped uh, maybe somebody you know to really move in the direction of a courageous conversation. Stay tuned because we've got so much more to unpack about how to talk, how to have these conversations. We're going to talk about so many things related to how to actually do it, what to say, when to say it. 
So make sure you stay tuned every Wednesday night through the month of June. We're going to unpack this in more depth. And make sure you stick with us on Sundays as we dive through the Word of God and hear His message. Well, we never like to end our broadcast without offering Christ, our source, our strength, our Savior. So take a moment now to hear this powerful message of how you can become saved. Now, as you've watched this message, we want you to know that Jesus Christ, who provides our hope, our strength, and who we have faith in, is available to you. And so we never like to end our broadcast without offering Christ. And today, if you're ready to receive Christ, simply pray this prayer after me. Dear God, today, I put my trust in you. And I now speak with my mouth that I believe in Jesus Christ, that he lived, he died, and he rose again. And today, I can put my faith in him. Now, God, continue to lead me as I know that you unconditionally love me. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. If you prayed that prayer for the first time, no matter where you are, let us know. Go to our website, fullpurpose.org, click on prayer requests, and we'll be glad to connect with you, reach out to you, and let you know you're not by yourself. Congratulations, and we look forward to you walking and growing in God through Jesus Christ. All right, praise God. Well, thank you so much for watching this Bible study. I'm Pastor G.J. Barnes of the Purpose Church. God bless you. For those who are watching now, we want to remind you guys, don't forget, we've got a movie premiere coming up. Get your tickets. Visit fullpurpose.org, fullpurpose.org to get your tickets. You don't want to miss them. In-person tickets, if you wait to the last minute, the price goes up. Uh, so get the tickets now. Pre-get your tickets. They will be cheaper. All right. God bless you. We'll see you next time.